Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations on your uh, Western Division Championship. Thank you. And if you could, just kind of summarize a little bit about your season. Uh, give us a little bit of rundown how your team got to this point, and then we'll open it up for questions from the media. Well, it's, it's um, certainly been a season of all seasons for us, considering where we started. You know, one in four. And, um, you know, I, I look at it and I, and I tell people all the time, just like uh, Coach Robinson used to always tell us, uh, the credit goes to the man in the arena. And I'm saying that to say that these young guys and the, and the seniors or what have you did not give up uh, during that that first five uh, games. And I think that in itself is a testament to the character of this football team. And uh, we're fortunate enough that they believed in what we believed in. The coaches stuck together. And um, we we always say you take one game at a time, and actually that's exactly what they did. We'll open it up for questions for Grambling State head coach Doug Williams. Hey, coach, it's Jason P. at the Times. Hey, Jason, how are you? Good. Uh, you talked about the, and I asked Coach Jones this just a minute ago. Can you talk about the differences you see in your team now? and the team you saw back in late September that lost A&M, and similarly on the other side of the ball for them? Well, I, th I think number one, and, and, and this, this all stemmed back to the spring, uh, coming into a, a season, uh, getting in late, and, and getting guys to buy into what we was doing compared to what they have done before, uh, playing with young quarterbacks, and, and everybody trying to find each other. I think that's what the bottom line. Everybody trying to feel for each other as a team. And uh, those first five games was, uh, to me, was a learning experience for everybody. And, uh, you know, at that bye week, I think we kind of gathered ourselves and realized where we were. And, um, you know, my thing was to the team was, uh, from now on, it boils down to what you want your legacy to be at Grammar State University and, and, and give them a chance to write their own legacy. And I think um, no matter what happened on Saturday, you, you got to give them credit for where we are uh, getting an opportunity to go to the championship game. And also, it's another rematch between two Louisiana and Alabama teams. You just talked a little bit about that, and there's another one coming up in about a month or so. Well, uh, I don't know what I can speak to that one, <laughs> but 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 I know um, to this one, you know, fortunate enough, you know, uh, AJ and I know each other well, got a lot of respect for each other. I like what he does and what he's done over the years, you know, and you can probably consider him the dean, or dean of the swag at this time. And for a guy that's been to the championship game as much as he has, let you know that he's going to have his team ready, and, and that's a good thing. But uh, the rematch here is, 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 is a rematch in the championship game. And, and the way I look at that, if it's ever going to be a rematch, that's the best place for it to be in the championship game. Like the other school from Louisiana and Alabama is going to be in the championship game, which, you know, I, if it's going to be one, I'd rather take this one than, than just a regular, regular season game. Thanks, Coach. Coach, this is Mark Gray from HSRN. Congratulations on winning the West. How are you? Thank you, Mark. Can't hear that well, but uh, I hear a little bit. Okay. Uh, basically, what I wanted to ask is you to navigate a whole lot. Coming in late, you lose your sports information director, and as you were trying to set the tone for this generation of Grambling football, um, what was the direction that you were trying to tell these kids on when you got there? Well, you know, first of all, Grambling has a... Uh, a long history of athletics and especially football. Uh, number one, you got to get these young guys to buy into Gramlin. Number one, being here, going to school, and and where you are, and 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 taking having some pride in what you do. I think that was the number one thing. And coming back and making sure they went to the Eddie Robinson Museum, uh, watched the old clips of what Gramlin used to be. And we know it won't get back to what it used to be, but at the same time, there's no reason not to have the pride in Gremlin. So when they leave here, after their eligibility is up, you know, we want them to leave with the idea that I've, I had an opportunity to play at Gremlin. Can you talk about the challenges? you got uh, two quarterback situations, and one of them happens to be your son. Well, I didn't look at it as a challenge. I look at it that we was fortunate enough to have two young quarterbacks who was able to steer us and put us where we are today. You know, uh, I, I think we was fortunate enough to have two, and and we didn't have one of the two. I don't know whether or not we would be where we are today, and that's the good part about having those two. So I didn't look at it from a challenge standpoint. 
can you talk about Mario Lewis? You've seen just about every great Grambling receiver that's been there for about the last 30, 40 years or what have you. And just if, if not from a statistical standpoint, from the physical tools that he possesses, how good is that kid? Well, number one, I, you know, I had the fortune of playing with, with Mario's coach, and that's Sammy White, and playing with a lot of other guys, the Carlos Pennywells of the world, and and <laughs> coaching the Scotty Anderson, the Tremont Johnson, and the Tarbert, and all of them bring a little something different to the table. You know, and, and I said this, what I, what I liked about Mario, number one, uh, he's in grad school, which means mentally and, and, and mature-wise, he understood why he was out there. Uh, for a kid to not have played football in high school and to come off the intramural ground to do what he's done this year, uh, I think to me speaks volumes. Uh, offensively, you know, in this conference, I think when you think about what Mario has done, it's it's almost impossible for a guy that didn't grow up in the in the Pee Wee League and in the high school and and learning. Uh, he basically just learned how to be a receiver this year. It's unfortunate we won't get him back another year. Because, you know, he played in a whole different offense. That offense was more of a spread option who didn't allow him to run the, the routes, the combination routes and different things that he's doing now. So you would have to say that from spring up until now, Mario has been a, 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 a project in the work that has become a pretty good work. And, and he's learning and he's attentive and he understands what he has to do. And can you talk about your linebacker, Cliff Exama, who's been a, a stellar performer since, you know, uh, the last three, four years there. And, and not only what he does for your team in terms of leading them in tackles, but, you know, the presence that he sets in that unit as a whole. Well, you know what? When I, when I walked here in the Gremlin in March, uh, it was evident who was the leader of this football team. And, you know, I didn't make no bones about it. I didn't come here and try to change the culture. I got in with the system, and, and and Cliff was was none even close to being the leader of this Grambling football team, and and it's amazing that when when you ask question about the football team, everybody would always look to Cliff, and the good part about it, he not only lead by uh, as a leader, but he lead by example by going out playing football, and and has led this football team, and um, in the last couple of games that we had an opportunity to win some close ones. Cliff has been a guy that's come through with some key plays. So I think uh, that in itself uh, typifies what kind of leader that he is. When you look at the program, is the future with this generation now, you have to go back out to the recruiting trail, or are we just scratching the surface on what this Doug Williams, you know, Chapter 2 era will be at Grammar? I, you know, I don't know. Number one, I'm fortunate to have had a foundation when I got here this second time around. Now, you know, do we have to go out and recruit? Yeah, in order to be competitive, we have to. And, um, you know, I think we'll be fortunate enough to get some guys that can come in here and keep uh, the legacy of Grambling going forward. But the good part about this conference that I found out this year, the parity, the parity is, is, is here, you know, uh, on any given – it's one of those on any given Saturday. Because, you know, at one point, and I think um, – you know, A.J. alluded to it, you know, nobody picked A.J. to win the East, and that's the good part about it. Everybody picked Gramlin to win the, the West, and, and I was sitting over here with the freshman quarterback, didn't know who I had. And early on, you know, we, we had to struggle to get where we are today. And, um, you know, Jackson, who was actually um, ineligible to be in the, temp, the conference championship game, was a team to beat. I mean, you know, and we had an opportunity to go to Jackson and 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 beat Jackson. Uh, a and M went to Southern, and got beat, and then went down and played in the um, the Magic City Classic and beat the team that everybody thought was going to win it, Alabama State. And 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 that's why they're where they are today because this is an unpredictable league and it's parity in it. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks. Yeah, Doug. This is Roscoe. How you doing? Hey, Roscoe. Uh, tell me, how does? Uh the Alabama A and M team reflect um, uh, Anthony's personality, and uh, you know they, they say the team reflect the coach's personality. How does that team reflect his personality? Well, you know, I, I did have the fortune of coaching against uh, Coach Jones before I left. You know, and, and like I say, you know, I, I know AJ, and, and we was roommates at the Super Bowl, and his personality, his team plays just like him. You know, he, he's a guy that's gonna coach him up to not make mistakes. And and when you do make a mistake against him, he he make you pay. And you know if you watch 
his football team, they're a very, very sound football team. Uh, they might not be fancy, but what they do when they hit you, they catch you off guard, they catch you by surprise, and uh, you can know they're going to run the football. I know down here when we played the first time, we knew they was going to run the football, but, but we still couldn't stop it because they was executing. And, and that's kind of coach he is, you know, and, and he's been uh, a great football coach over the last 10 years, and I think his record will speak to that, and, you know, and I think it speaks for itself. Well, was he that kind of a player, you know, just uh, whose big thing was not so, maybe not so much uh, talent, but his work ethic and, and his ability to execute? Well, you know, let me say this. A.J. had a chance to play in the National Football League had a chance to, to win a Super Bowl. And and A.J. wasn't the guy that was in the spotlight. Nobody highlighted or spotlighted A.J., but he found a way to play and found a way to win. And I think, um, you know, his coaching style is, is basically the same thing. And at the end of the day, you know, like like Coach Rob used to always tell us, you know, when the great scores come, it, it's not how well, how well you play, but who won. And I think A.J. is typifying what Coach Rob would want in a player and the individual that he coaches his team to win. And at the end of the day, that's, that's what it's all about. Hey, Doug, Reggie Benson with the Times. Good morning. Hey, Reggie. Uh, earlier in the year when we chatted about uh, Jamarcus Savage, you had mentioned to me he had gone through some injuries and some various things. Can you kind of update me on his situation and how he's played over the last month and a half or so? You know, I certainly like the way that uh, Jamarcus has played, over, especially the last two games, ball game. Uh, and even starting, I actually want to go back to the Pine Bluff game. Uh, I think Jamarcus has finally gotten, I don't think he's all the way healthy, but I think he is healthy as he's going to be for this season. And, and with him and, and the other guy rising to the occasion along with Cliff, uh, I certainly think he has given us an opportunity to, to be where we are today. Hey, Coach, good morning to you. Ty Miller from Sheridan Broadcasting. Hey, Ty. And, Doug, congratulations on getting back to the SWAC championship game as you come back to the coaching fold here. Uh, I want to talk to you about the first time around you took on Alabama A&M earlier this season, and that game ended up 20-14. to Both teams scoreless at halftime. Can you take me back to that, that first half and how tough that game was the first half? Oh, it was a tough game, and, and, and a good part about it, you know, we, we had some opportunities to score, and we didn't, you know, and you go back to that game, we had eight turnovers in that game. And and a lot of that was credit to what, what A&M was doing to us and along with the young guys that we had in position and, and, and the team as a whole learning what we want to do. And hopefully now we're at that stage that everybody understands what's at stake and what's at hand and what we look for from the coaching staff. And, and the last six weeks has proved that they understand it. And we've had people to stand up and along with Dorrance and, and – and the quarterback play and, and, and Mario Lewis and the offensive line has done a, a, a good job for us and defense front has come around. So it's a team effort. And even the special team with, with our kicker Zotan, um, you know, hitting those two field goals and Jackson hitting the 53-yard uh, last week in uh, New Orleans to set the tone. So we, everybody has basically done their part in this six-game run. Hey, Doug, can you talk about Kadarius Lacey and Darns, how they compare? Because both had great games the first time around. I think they're two different individuals. Lacey will wear you down. <laughs> Them big thighs, man, it's it's hard to put your arms around him. And, you know, he's not the easiest guy to, to tackle. He, he's like a little tank. You know, he's kind of like that old guy in Atlanta. He's one of them turn to burn the type of guy that, you know, you just can't go up there with an arm tackle. What Darns is, if you watch Darns, uh, Darns does not look at look like that guy that got a thousand yards. You know, I look at him every day in practice. I'm trying to wonder how he get a thousand. But what he does have is a will and 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 a and an opportunity to 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 play. Because you know, we didn't start him early in the, in, in the season simply because of what his spring was like. But but the kid wanted to play. He's shown us he wanted to play, and uh, we glad we were smart enough to play him. In terms of your quarterbacks, now you played two the first time around, and, and down the stretch, DJ has been the man. So, will you continue with that formula in this game? Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not wanting to sit here and want to 
play one quarterback for two series, another quarterback for these series. I, I don't think you get continuity like that. I think somebody had to stand up and be the leader. The last two weeks, DJ certainly had stood up and uh, become that leader uh, early on. You know, I, I benched him early. As a matter of fact, in in the game against. Uh, Alabama a and the first time, D.J. actually hurt his toe, came up with a bad turf toe, and, and was unable to play the next two weeks. You know, even though we, we had a bye, you know, he still was unable to play, and uh, he's actually just getting over the turf toe, but he was played well enough on it, and Frank came in and did a, a great job of, of, of leading us to, to victory on a couple of them, and, you know, and, and D.J. had come in against the Valley when it was overtime to, to throw a win and TD pass, and came in against Jackson, and uh, we went on to win, and, and, and since that time, it, it started the last couple of games. Coach, how much better has your defense gotten since that last drive of the Alabama a game in which they got the ball left with about four minutes left, and they left you about 52 seconds left on the clock before they scored? Yeah, that, that was a tough one because, you know, we when we kicked off to them, I'm still looking at the uh, uh, personal foul on the kickoff. You know, they had a good return, and we – we added 15 more yards to it with with the personal foul. Those are the kind of things that we we cannot afford to do. Um, but they did what they had to do to keep the ball away from them because we was actually just getting a little momentum, and 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 hopefully if we had got a chance at the ball again, we would have been able to score. But uh, they did what they had to do and they put it away. When we talked early in the season, we spoke about the fact that uh, a lot of people thought coming you coming back would automatically win the SWAC championship. You said you never thought that way. And early on, it looked as if you were right in your assessment of how good or your team was in transition. But now that you're back in the SWAC championship game, how personally satisfying would it be to win the SWAC championship in your first year back? Well, well, well let me say this. I mean, everybody want to win, number one. But I think we got to be fair to, to these young guys and, and to this coaching staff is the fact that to be in the championship game compared to where we were is a blessing in itself. But I don't think nobody goes to the championship game not to win, and, and just like a and going to be there to win it, uh, Grandma going to be there to win it. And any time you get a chance to win a championship, man, that's that's something that is hard to top. You know, um, it, it's hard walking away when you had an opportunity and you didn't win it, but it's gratifying when you do win it. But uh, like I say, for these young guys and, and for us as coaches, it's good to know that we're here. All right, Doc, thanks, man. Oh, go ahead. Be finished? Yeah, I'm finished. Okay, well, thanks and good luck this weekend, man. All right, thanks, Tom. Coach, this is Santori. How are you doing? Hey, Santori. Question for you. Uh, the first question is, you know, you spoke about Doris Roberts earlier and, and what he's been able to do. That offensive line has really improved. Talk about their – the maturation process that they've had over the year. Well, and, and, I, and I think I stated it earlier, the bottom line is buying into what <clears throat> what we wanted from an offensive standpoint compared to what they've been they've been doing offensively. I think I think that's the number one thing. Um, you know, there was two different systems, totally two different systems. And, and you know, you, you've been doing one thing for uh, a certain amount of time, any time you do it for two or three years, that's what you know. And all of a sudden, you got a new coaching staff coming in here telling you a whole different ball game. And we had to make sure that they understood that, you know, we're not going to do it the way you did it last time. We're doing it this way. And um, they had to get used to it. Uh, another question for you is that you and uh, you and Coach Anthony Jones have a lot of respect for one another and known each other for a long time. Talk about the time that you guys were roommates uh, at the Super Bowl when you played with the Redskins. Well, for me, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to talk about. You know, we was roommate, but uh, that, <laughs> that 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 Saturday, actually, I had a a four hour root canal because we didn't talk that much that night because <laughs> there wasn't a lot of talk I could do. I was in a lot of pain. And, uh, you know, I just got my rest, and he, A.J. got his, and we woke up the next morning feeling good. But, you know, we played the whole season together. So, you know, we always talk because we both was on the same side of the ball. Coach, uh, Coach Bill Bryant with the Huntsville Times. Uh, you mentioned coming in in March. What were some of the challenges you faced coming in at that late date as opposed to if you'd come in, say, in December? Well, you know, it was, it was unfortunate that, you know, I didn't get a chance to, to recruit the whole year, number one, because, 
you know, Coach Broadway decided to leave actually the day of signing day, that evening of signing day. So, you know, I had no idea that I was going to even be coming into Gremlin. And, and, you know, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, DJ came in here with me, but DJ was already enrolled in school in January. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I didn't know I was going to be at Gremlin. He didn't know, and um, nobody else knew, basically. And and I guess when you get a late start of recruiting, and after recruiting is over, basically, you have to pick up the guys that you think are out there that can come in and help you down the stretch, and that's where we were. Um, you also mentioned about the parity of the league earlier, given, given where you all were um, earlier in the season. Is that what you sort of preached to your players? Uh, because a and was sort of in the same situation as well, to just stay the course and not you're not panic because of the season being so long and about so much uh, you know parity in the league? Well, you got to stay the course. You know, and, and I know a lot of times when you're losing, the easy thing in the world to do is quit and, and, and just uh, quit on the coaches. Coaches quit on the players and everything else. But fortunately, these guys didn't do that. You know, we came to practice every day. We met every day, and they worked hard. We worked them as hard <laughs> and when we won the first game before the first game as we did after the game. So I think at the end of the day, you got to give all the credit to those guys that didn't give up.